Hey, Lightbox 2020. My name is Matt Buholtz, and I'm moderating the panel today for Social Media for Artists. Today, we've got some amazing panelists to come and talk to you to give you information on how you can navigate social media, better present yourself, and really make the most of the platforms that you use as an artist. So without further ado, I'm going to let the panelists introduce themselves and we'll get going. Uh, I guess I could start. Uh, hi, I'm Kiana, Kiana Con Smith. Uh, you probably know me by Kiana Mai or Kiana Mai Art on all my social media. Uh, I'm a storyboard artist for Disney television animation. Uh, I work on Big City Greens and I've dabbled a little bit in character design, um, but I'm pr primarily known for boards and I like Pokemon and that's about it. <laughs> a good thing to like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm Gabriel Piccolo. I'm a comic book artist. Uh, right now I'm at DC Comics. I just released uh, my first graphic novel last year, which is Teen Titans Raven. And I'm releasing Teen Titans Beast Boy this year. I'm very well known for my Teen Titans fan art. And I'm also known for my Icarus and the Sun comic, which is also coming out this year. Awesome. Yeah, congrats on that. That was a big one. <laughs> I'm Lois von Barla, otherwise known as Loish, and I've been um, sharing my art online since I was 17, and that was back in 2003. Um, so I've been really active on social media for a long time. I do mostly concept art for my work, and I recently started a Patreon, so I'm doing more of my own thing now. Um, and I'm always trying to sort of like um, be flexible and move in whatever direction works for me right now. That's um, being very active on social media and trying to monetize that through Patreon. So that's what I do. Great. And for those of you who don't know me, uh, again, my name is Matt Buholtz. I'm head of social media for DeviantArt. And so uh, I've got a lot of social media history as well. And I'm really excited to talk to such amazing panelists as these that have such great experiences with social media and have made such names for themselves across different platforms. So as you all know, like 45% of the population right now uses social media. And for artists, that is a massive audience to be able to reach. Um, on average, three hours a day, people spend on social media, which is crazy. But I would like to know, uh, I'd like to go back in time. And what was the first social platform that you guys posted your art to? Uh, does my parents' fridge count? just had people like walking through and look at our fridge like oh nice but um after that uh deviantart was my first one um it, I, it was there early <laughs> yes i was either 13 or 14 um it's not the current one that i use now i had an old an old secret one where i posted like pokemon stuff and uh it's weird how i came back to that after what 10 years now um, but yeah, I post Pokemon stuff and like comics and just like uh, mostly drawing Team Rocket and like the characters from the anime because I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, DeviantArt was my first one. I, I have a secret DA as well. DeviantArt was my first <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, uh, I, was, I was in high school, like 15 years old. I bought my first bamboo tablet and I was crazy about Kingdom Hearts. Uh, and I, I only posted Kingdom Hearts fan art on that account. That account still exists. I cannot delete it because I don't have the, like, the means to delete it anymore because I think <laughs> I lost the email or something. Yeah, it's all right, it's there. But oh it's secret, God, no, one knows, it. no one knows that it's me. <laughs> find we'll it. find it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be linked in the description below, Lightbox. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, and then I came back to it on 2014 with the 365 Days of Doodles, which was like a, a personal project for me to, to go back to drawing because I was, I was a hobbyist by then and I was almost stopping uh, drawing because I, I was working at the hostel and was consuming most of my time. And then I, it was like a New Year's resolution. Like next year, I'm going to draw every single day, one drawing for each day of the year. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And that was the, ver the, the very first Thing that kind of kick-started my social media presence because I, I gained most of my followers from that first moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, it started like, I think DeviantArt was the first official platform that I posted on. But before that, I was also active on these drawing boards called Okaki boards where you could oh, like yeah. doodle and then it goes on a kind of forum type board and um, other users could respond. 
Um, and that was like the first place where I sort of like became a part of an online community. And it was like a bunch, just like a handful of completely random people from all over the world. I think we were all like, you know, ranging from like 11 to like 16 years old, like all different skill level as well. Um, and that, that was really fun, but it, it unfortunately died out. Unfortunately, like I kind of became more active on DeviantArt before that ended so that most of those people jumped onto DeviantArt as well. Um, and some of them are still like, I still I keep in touch with them uh, and I hang out with them from time to time, um, which is the, the coolest thing about art communities is that like you build these connections that, that persevere. Yeah, one of the things I'd like to get into is for all of you, what drew you to want to post your artwork online? Like some people are so private with their collections of art, but to want to display it, what was the impetus there? Validation. Uh, for, for, for me, for me, it was it was because I wanted to keep track of my own progress. It was a much mm -hmm. like a much personal thing. I just wanted like to um, hold myself accountable if I yeah. missed a day. So that that was pretty much it for in, in the beginning. For me, it's like a part of my drawing process. Like for me, a drawing doesn't feel finished until I've showed it to somebody. And then I make a switch in my Makes mind sense. that the drawing is done. And, and um, even if they point out mistakes or whatever, I'll just be like, I'll take that into the next drawing. Um, like I just sort of close the door on um, tweaking a picture. Whereas if I don't share it, it just like can endlessly be modified and change mm -hmm. and it's never finished. So I love that. Me, that, that makes so yeah. much sense. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise it just stays there. And when I post it online, it's like, it's done. The world has seen it. I'm moving yeah. on, you know, on to the next thing. Oh, that's a cool way to look at it. For me, it's uh -huh. uh, been, it's always been more like community, just because like, I'm largely like, I feel like a fan artist. So like, I draw stuff from fandoms and um, being able to post like my ideas about these characters are like headcanons and like, putting it out there to share with people and then they like they like add on to it with their like ideas and like oh cool now I want to draw that and just like it kept me motivated to uh keep drawing and like drawing stuff for them like knowing that they would like it and then also for me because like I just found it enjoyable um I kind of re I, I relate to that feeling a lot nowadays Kiana mm -hmm. I relate to that a lot like uh, and, and you keep adding stuff and then there's this whole lore of these characters that keeps yeah. growing like I love that I love that so much about fan art yeah it's just it's just fun it's a good time yeah. <laughs> yeah it's fun to see how the communities build up around those characters too and the 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 head cannons that are created on there in a way mm -hmm. it's so much fun uh to reach you guys' community because all of you have built these amazing communities at this point by posting your artwork and engaging with people how many like how do you kind of parse where it's important for you to post to reach your community or do you find certain platforms are better for having different sorts of engagements with i'm on almost everything but i feel like the ones that work best for me are tumblr and twitter um just because it allows you to post multiple images and like mm -hmm. since I'm a board artist and like I like doing comics and stuff from time to time um sequential like being able to post like sequential art that really helps and I feel like it's easier for conversation um more than other pr platforms like Instagram it's a little hard to like sift through replies and like the okay, yeah. threading is kind of weird yeah mm -hmm. DeviantArt is really good too uh, Instagram has like when when a post reaches like you can't comment on it on the first few hours at least that that was that, that's how it is for me I, I tried to comment on it on the first few hours because mm -hmm. the comments are like manageable global but after like let's say five hours there's no way to find anything like yeah just a lot of comments on Twitter it's a little bit more manageable like I prefer Twitter to to just comment which to, to just exchange conversations with with uh, uh, followers yeah it's just like yeah twitter and tumblr always felt more personable to me like it's just easier to I, communicate i never know i never know how to communicate with people on tumblr though like it wasn't it was not That's my fair. favorite social media <laughs> no I, like, I, I i totally get it it's like when you find a niche though because like i have like my main tumblr where like i don't really communicate with people but then i have like my uh -huh. tiny like pokemon like tumblr where it's just oh. like my pokemon on followers and they're easy to talk to there um like they send me ass like messaging um just like 
when they reblog my stuff, adding a comment and then like I add on to that. So it's like it works with smaller communities for sure. But like if you have a big following, it's definitely harder. So I, I totally get what you're saying. For me, the platforms that I um, notice that I like get the most out of are like the platforms where there's like high engagement, right? So Instagram is like super high engagement. So that's mm -hmm. the obvious one for me to focus on. Also the platform where I have the most followers. So I try to like get the most out of that. But it's also the platforms where um, I can get the most inspiration out of what other people are posting there. Um, mm. Because I feel like you get the best results on platforms that like you genuinely enjoy using because then you gain mm -hmm. an intuitive knowledge really of what the platform is about and how to use it best. And, and, and I think it's also a lot about giving to get something back. Um, so mm -hmm. if you follow other artists and you like support them and share what they do and like what they do, then you can get that back a lot easier. And for me, Instagram has been like, I follow so many talented artists. Like sometimes I'm kind of freaked out by the amount of talented artists that are there. Like it's yeah. too many, you know, it's just like so many <laughs> talented artists, but I follow them. So when I'm on Instagram, I, ha I get like so much artistic inspiration. And on Twitter, there's like so much to talk about and to think about and these glimpses into people's personality, mm -hmm. which invites me to also show bits of my personality. And, um, and Tumblr for a while I also used a lot because I was getting so many inspiration and ideas from the sort of exchanges that were going on there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, it's like which ones feel uh, like they fit you are the ones that I think are most interesting to focus on. Sure. Yeah, I think that's a real good note that like each one will bring out different aspects. And kind of mm -hmm. like you were saying, a lot of people find discussion on Twitter, uh, visual inspiration on Instagram, uh, community on like Tumblr or DA and just very different ways to almost present yourself as an artist or different facets of yourself across the different social medias. Mm -hmm. uh, do you all feel that's important to have a presence across multiple social medias or do you ever feel like you would rather just direct to one? Uh, I like being on everything just in case, like you never just know. In case, like, yeah. Who's yeah, like who's looking where. So kind of having your little fingies and everything kind of kind of helps. Um, but ideally, like, it would be nice to have just one place where I could post art and like talk and like, that's it. Just because like, it, it can spread you a little thin when you're like trying to manage all these different things. But um, mm -hmm. overall, I do think it's worthwhile just because like, I have gotten opportunities from like, each different platform yeah. that, I, <laughs> that I'm on in like different ways. And like, that wouldn't happen if I wasn't posting on them. Mm. Also, because uh, I'm always afraid of that platform to simply shut down, kind of what happened mm. to Tumblr in a way. So mm. it, a, a friend once told me this, that the followers that you have on social media, they are not yours exactly. They are the platforms. So if anything happens to the platform, you are screwed. So the best yeah. thing you can do is spread your influence across every platform that you can uh, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes uh, you, your art does, doesn't resonate with uh, a specific platform, but it's still worth the shot. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, for yeah, I mean, me, that's... I always recommend that people use multiple platforms as well because they um, they can like kind of find that connection with the platform and kind of grow from that. Um, because for me, I've always noticed like. Um, Instagram is super image based, but there are a lot of people who have like, you know, on Twitter have like a personality that can work really well on Twitter, especially like I have an, uh, a friend um, that I do like, we, we like strategize together. Uh, her name's Rengen and she, uh, she's a really talented artist and she has been like super active on Instagram for a while, but it hasn't really grown. But she's also like, she does a lot of, she reads a lot of fantasy books. She does a lot of research, has a lot of tips and advice. So I was like, why don't you try Twitter more intensively, you know, and, and try to get that knowledge out there and connect to like the fantasy writing and art community there because they're very active. And that has worked out way better for her. And I, I try to do it the same way. Like I'm, I'm active on a couple of different platforms, not too many, but like a, a focus on, on a handful of them. And I'm always trying to figure out like how I can like get the most out of it out of that platform and the way that it's designed and that that always like gives me new inspiration new ideas and new opportunities and when indeed when one of the platforms suddenly goes down then you have a presence somewhere else which is like yeah. platforms could always randomly die 
like look yeah. at the vine mm-hmm. vine you know? vine yeah. drops so <laughs> fast that's Rest so scary that's so scary <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh, well, cool. Uh, we've already had a few mentions in just what we've talked about now, but what I'd really like to get into is some actionable tips or direction that we can give people watching, because I know a lot of people who do want to watch the panel are trying to learn from everyone's knowledge here about how they can best use uh, social media for their art. So before we get into the nitty gritty, I would like to just ask kind of the broad question to get things started of, how do you see art's place on social media or how do you see social media's need in art? Like how they help each other? Like, or? Uh, so for me, like I'd say that social media plays like a, a role of a portfolio, right. of oh, a okay. like community and a, almost a client list for yeah. artists. But there, I think that there's so many other things as well. How do you see that fitting in for the artistic community? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that. I think it's all of those things and I've used it for all of those things. Like as a fan artist, like yeah, community is like a huge one for me. But like when I started uh, aiming for like a storyboarding career and like wanting to do this as a job, I like started realizing like, oh, I can just like post my art here and like hope somebody sees it and reaches out to me um and like that is how I got my job like I like I got my job at Disney because my showrunners found my stuff on Twitter and um that's how I like get most of my opportunities now like I said like people just reaching out to me through Instagram or uh they find my stuff on Twitter they happen to see something on Tumblr um so using it as like a portfolio site has uh really just brought me so many opportunities for sure yeah, for me it was kind of the same kind of the same way kind of like uh the, I, I i post a lot of fan art so i post a lot of the stuff that interests me that, that i have fun drawing and at some point that worked that clicked with uh with clients uh sp- specifically in my my current client which is dc comics uh, I started working for them because I was doing the series of Teen Titans uh, drawings and that kind of went viral and at some point uh, in 2017 they reached out to me because they saw that and they were like hey uh, you know that this that you were doing keep doing that but for us that was basically yeah. the email mm-hmm. and, and then I was hired so oh, yeah so especially cool. Especially because here in Brazil, there's uh, the, the the industry is not it's not the same way as, as in the U.S. or mm-hmm. uh, in Europe, Netherlands. Uh, we don't have we have just one uh, convention, just one comic comic con, and it's uh, very much like let's say San Diego, which is very focused on entertainment. It's not as much focused on portfolio reviews and stuff like that for artists. So it's right. really really tough to to get to clients here so i think social media is the biggest uh the biggest thing that artists can do to show their work here in brazil Mm -hmm. yeah for me like social media has given me the opportunities that i have like i couldn't have planned out my own career with the knowledge that i had because i i really just didn't have any um i didn't have any like idea when I started out influencers like what that that wasn't a word um so I didn't really know like how somebody could make a living off of a social media presence um I didn't know like in the nether I studied animation so I had some ideas of how I could become an animator but I never like really heard of somebody doing what I do now like as far as I know like in my own environment I was the first person to handle my career in the way that I have and it's still always changing and evolving and that's purely because the opportunities kind of like organically grew from doing what I love and sharing it online Um, but I do think something that I always tell artists that are looking for advice on how to share their art online is to not see social media as a portfolio Um, Because a portfolio is like a display of your best work and people, you know, want to see a portfolio if they want to know what your skills are. Um, But I, but I always sort of have this metaphor where it's like you have, um, you know, a printed out version of a drawing that you made and you go up to somebody on a busy square and you just like hand it to them and you just say, this is my drawing. 
And like, what kind, what kind of reaction would you expect from someone if you yeah. did that? They would probably yeah. be like, excuse me, who are you? Why are you doing <laughs> this? You know? And I'm always like, social media is the exact same. It's like a busy square. It's full of people. They're all talking to each other. They all have their connections. They're looking for inspiration, whatever. They're doing a bazillion different things. And the most mm -hmm. important thing is to approach posting art online, not as a portfolio, but as a conversation like that you post it and then with that you start some kind of conversation not literally but like you start you spark something about inspiration or about passion or about you know in your since you guys make a lot of fan art i also made a lot of disney fan art all of my art would be like starting a conversation about you know what do you think of disney which is your favorite mm -hmm. and i think that that's when that's how social media can elevate art much further beyond just something to look at to like having a conversation with a person. And that's, that's what I love about social media because I feel like I'm getting to know people, not just seeing art. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think something that's often overlooked in social media for artists is the captioning and the copywriting that goes along with it. Like you said, to start that conversation, even if it's as simple as who's your favorite Disney character is such a small thing to put that can open the doors for so much more and such a deeper yeah. like communication to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think people are looking for connection online, you know, they're, they're like, they're even in the negative sense. I mean, you have people who just had an awful day and they go online to like rage at somebody, you know, but it is a way of looking for connection. And yeah. it's the same for people who want like, a, who ask questions about how you make stuff or who want to give you feedback on how you did it. It's like, it's all people searching for connection. And if you can build on that, then you're like using social media to its maximum potential. Um, mm -hmm. That's how I've gotten the most out of it. Yeah, I, I also like what you guys are saying about it kind of being like a learning tool in some ways, like just learning mm -hmm. from other artists, because I've definitely done that as well, like, because I went to art college for a hot minute, and like, I was learning a lot there, but not necessarily for the field that I wanted to be in, like my school was very like feature animation focused, um, while well, I wanted to go into television. So for me, going on Twitter and finding like, Cartoon Network artists or like Disney artists or like Disney television animation artists and like people that were working the jobs that I wanted to work on um, really helped like just seeing like their threads about like navigating the t like the TV industry or like if like I had a mutual that happened to like work at Cartoon Network like reaching out to them and being like hey like if you have time do you have any advice on this board that I'm working on and like more often than not, they'd be like super cool about it and like help me out and like redline my boards for me, which is like amazing. Um, so it's like, it's a very excellent learning tool and like way to connect with people in industries that you want to be in. And yeah, I had to see how had, they handle it. Sorry to interrupt it. This is just yeah. exciting me. Um, but I had such a similar <laughs> experience because I was at an art school that I really hated. And like, I think that looking back, like, at the time I really hated it, but looking back, I also noticed that I was like super depressed in that time. So like everything mm -hmm. wasn't working for me. Um, mm -hmm. The school wasn't a good fit, like where I lived wasn't a good fit, like everything was really off and I just felt so awful. And the only way I managed to get out of that was by sending a deviant art note to a, a <laughs> Dutch artist that I knew, uh, Leo de Weiss. Um, and he, I was like, I just, offloaded. I was like, I hate this school. I hate it because of A, B, and C. And he wrote back and he was like, well, my school is not like that at all. Like we're super chill about everything. And it's, it's, I think it's a much better fit for you. And like, as soon as I saw his reply on DeviantArt, I instantly quit my school and I switched yeah. to the school that he went to and the rest is history for me. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I, I I, I don't got an education in art because uh, we don't have the concept of art schools in Brazil. We can, you can mm -hmm. major in, let's say, graphic design, but it's not the same thing. I, I, I went to a graphic design school. I quit on, on the mm -hmm. first uh, semester because it just wasn't, it just didn't f felt right because mm -hmm. you didn't have to draw I, 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 and I wanted to draw. Mm -hmm. um, so the way that I learned back then was browsing through different art and Pinterest to get mm -hmm. tutorials and stuff. And it was it was so much harder to find good stuff than it is nowadays because you can find a, a thread on Twitter that helps so much. I have like a full list of, thre of threads on Twitter that are like references and, and, and resources and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, let's get into a little bit of the, the grit now that we're 
all warmed and have kind of shared our experiences. Uh, what do you guys think would be the most important thing before someone even posts online to know about social media? Like when they're first starting to say, I wanna put my art on social media, what, what do they need to know going into it? I always say, don't see the mm. likes uh, and comments that you get and the engagement that you get on a drawing in any way as a reflection of the value of your art. Uh, mm -hmm. I always say there's a huge difference between um, art, uh, which is like the skills that you have, and, um, and then on the other hand, marketing, and social media is marketing. So the response that you get will be based more on marketing principles than on your skill level. So never think that because one of your drawings gets fewer likes that that's uh, not your best drawing. It, it's dependent on too many factors and never take that stuff personally. Yeah, I would say pretty much the same exact thing because like it is something like uh because like I don't know when I started social media there weren't really any like rules about it nobody like was there to like warn me about like what like that meant and like I did just think like oh these likes like the amount of like favorites I'm getting is not the same as like this artist so like obviously I'm just like not good enough but it's like it's not true like like Lois was saying it is a lot of just like being able to market yourself and like, like it, it's a completely different skill. Um, and yeah, I think it's important for like, especially young artists to know that cause it can be really discouraging going in. Um, but once you do like build up that skill and like how to market yourself, like it just becomes so much easier and um, yeah, likes do not equal skill. For sure. <laughs> I would say be careful to when, when you when you go viral because it can be tricky because when you go like I, I know a friend who, who went viral a couple of times but it's always work that they didn't exactly like and they felt that they needed to produce that same work to keep people's attention so mm -hmm. like it, it, it kind of it, it it aligns with what Lois said that don't that you can't value like your art based on the likes because sometimes it's something that you don't even usually do it's something very random that can just blow up so don't don't be as uh, don't be so focused on that i think yeah yeah like you shouldn't have to like compromise like your artistic integrity for yeah yeah you shouldn't of... dictate what you with the kind of content that you're going to create yeah, yeah. I think that's a big thing that people face is when do I create content for my audience and when do I create content for myself? And right. do you have a responsibility to cater to what you feel they want to see? And that's going to be different for every person and what you want to accomplish with your art. Yeah. I think, I think there's a, it has to, you have to, you have to like, uh, for me, it works like a kind of a balance because most of the time I'm drawing stuff that I like. Mostly the Teen Titans stuff, the stuff that I like. And sometimes I draw something else just to, to add some bit of spice, just to, like just not to be on the same subject. Or let's say if I have a convention and I have to, uh, and I have to create new products, new, new prints or artwork, whatever, I try to create. Of course, it's, it's still going to be something that I enjoy, but I try to create something that it's going to be sellable at that convention. So I think that's a little bit, a bit of that, of the audience versus something that I enjoy. Kind of like I'm, I'm, when I'm creating uh, artwork for, for conventions, I'm trying to think more of what the audience is going to enjoy. That makes sense. Right. Yeah, it's definitely a balance. And then like we were talking about like different social media platforms, like every platform I feel like has a different vibe and like they like certain things more than other like I feel like on Instagram like for instance like usually I've noticed that like illustrations tend to do better and like like fully fleshed like, illustrations like meanwhile meanwhile on Twitter like you post like a dumb comic like it'll go viral there and like maybe that's not yeah. for you necessarily but like it's what the audience there wants so like finding the balance of like doing what you want to do and like gearing it towards like what each platform like seems to be drawn to more can be very valuable um and it's like yeah and I if, like, you, if I, you know what audience is expecting 
Mm-hmm. If, you, if you know what your audience likes or, or what they are expecting, you can always have that card over there, like to just, oh, hey, okay, now, now I need this disengagement for, let's say, prom- promote something, to, to announce something. Then you can post yeah. something that you know that it's going to work. And then you can, uh, after that, post something like from work or stuff that you need to promote, stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Like I tend to, um, it's like a, it's a two-way street in that like, uh, the kind of content that like I like to make, I use social media, like, like for instance, like I like drawing Team Rocket, like whatever. I, on Instagram, like maybe I'll post more like illustrative stuff of them there. And then like Twitter, like I'll post like comics of them there, like using like the information I got from like what audiences like on each platform and then like making it into something that I enjoy also and uh putting it out there in different ways kind of i think Um, that nails it because for me like what i always emphasize and what's always worked for me is to like know what what i want to make um Mm -hmm. uh which is not always in a vacuum like there's that's an illusion but there's like some degree of like you you need to know where your passion lies and what you want to like do, to grow um, that's like a deeply personal thing and then there's like your personality as well like mm-hmm. what kind of person are you what kind of artist are you that's like sort of the core that doesn't change because of social media and then when you bring it into social media you like um, you don't change what you do or what you make hopefully in an ideal situation but you adapt it to yes. um, the, yep. the, the platform, you know? So mm-hmm. exactly like you said, um, you, you do like a comic on Twitter and then like a different way of presenting it on Instagram. And that, mm-hmm. but the core doesn't change. And I think that that's the most important thing because as an artist, if you try to actually create what people want to see, then you're going to get into like a dangerous zone of losing your own identity and, and mm-hmm. like following your own passion. And you, you might, burn out from that you know if you Mm -hmm. once you lose interest in that how are you going to rekindle it um but if you stay close to what you want to make and you just try to be smart in how you adapt that for social media so like you don't have to like change the content but you could change like the way that you present it you could change the framework of how you present it or the platform that you present it on like i'd say that's the best stuff to adapt and change but like without losing your deepest artistic soul you know which is like your passion and what you want to do and what you want to say Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's yeah. always a chance with the new platforms and new features on platforms to be able to experiment with your work to see where it performs and if it might perform better. Like, yeah. uh, Lois, I know you take massive advantage of Instagram stories, like the way that you handle <laughs> artwork there and linking back to your feed. You do really great things to keep people looped into your content. And so making sure to take advantage and play with social media when new things come out. Uh, you're going to find a lot of ways to learn and hopefully reach a broader community with your art. Yeah, I think Kiana said some awesome stuff about that in her like resource that she shared. Yes, oh my gosh. We'll make sure that's linked too. You you wrote like the best (laughs) thing on social media for artists. (laughs) I'm glad. I think everyone on art Twitter was just like, yeah, fine. (laughs) (laughs) Finally. (laughs) It was so comprehensive. It was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it was I, I it was just something I felt like I would have liked to see um early on when I started. Um like nav- navigating algorithms and like how you like approach talking to like artists and also just like the dangers of it because like it it is not great for your mental health sometimes, especially like how we're talking about before, like if you do see it as a way to just like get likes or just get Mm -hmm. validation validation that becomes really yeah it becomes really dangerous for like your mental health and like I definitely like was like killing myself over making art like for people rather than for myself for a long time um so yeah I felt obligated to make that uh make that known and like tell like younger artists especially to be wary of that because it's very easy to fall into for sure sorry los angeles just semi trucks and police cars all day long (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so i would like to talk a little bit about the algorithms and just dealing with how to get your artwork 
quote unquote seen on social media. I think that's a challenge a lot of artists, especially when they're starting fresher on social media might have either delusions about or are scared to try and figure out. And just even the most general of tips I think would be helpful to some of the people watching. So how, mm. when you post something, do you try and make it as discoverable as possible? Uh, I definitely used to. Uh, currently, like, I don't know, I've gotten to a place where I'm like comfortable with like where I'm at and like don't really care about numbers anymore and just kind of like post whenever. Mm. But um, so I don't really keep up with like all the algorithm changes as much. I'm just like, yeah, people will see it. Like, it's fine. <laughs> but like before I, when I was I, like actively looking for work, and like uh wanting to get like a bigger following like yeah i would for sure pay attention to like posting times and seeing like looking at my analytics and seeing like who who my followers were and seeing like what resonated with them more um and it super helps like studying that and like being aware of that and like all the little like tricks and like stuff not to do that'll like get your artwork like repressed within the algorithm um i i, I do care a lot about the the time that i post because even though i have a large audience i don't post a lot because uh right now i'm mm. working on on two books at the same time which is insane and i can't afford to post maybe once a month so i have to make that post really really count, really count. so yeah so uh, I have to keep, and another thing, I'm, I'm in Brazil and most of my audience is in the, is in the US. So I have to keep track of oh, their right. time zones. So I have to post something that is uh, reachable to the US, Brazil, and a little bit of Europe, because I know I have a lot of followers in Spain and the UK. Mm -hmm. So I try to like align my posts to reach a, like a prime time for all these zones, if, yeah. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and then I try to use anything that I can to 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 bump that same post. So Twitter you can uh, comment on the same post, and it will bump it on people's timelines. Uh, RT in your shelf doesn't work for me. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because people don't like to see you RT in your own work. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what happens, but it doesn't work as well as a, as, as a reply. And on Instagram, I use stories to mm -hmm. to to sign or boost my own post. So let's say I post it after two hours, I boost it again after six, eight hours, I boost it again. And then 12 hours later, I boost it again for people from the, from a, a different time zone. Yeah. Oh, that's super smart. Uh, I found for me posting frequently has made the biggest difference. So, um, that does, does, does a lot of the difference. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, especially I, I, I on Instagram. Wish I again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wish I could post again every day. <laughs> yeah, um, I started going towards a system, like I sort of changed my whole system because uh, I was really like battling the algorithm. There were like these posts where I would like gain a lot of followers in a short time and then it would completely stagnate or even drop for a while. And it was just too stressful for me to sort I'm of at like, this point. I'm yeah, exactly at this point. <laughs> it's very <laughs> stressful because like Instagram is frequently like on DeviantArt, it was like unheard of to like lose a ton of followers, you know, maybe a couple of people would specifically unfollow you because they were like done with your stuff. But uh, on Instagram, like you get tons of unfollows. And I think that's because of like doing like bot cleanup or mm -hmm. like there's it's all, crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's like a little intense. So I um, started posting frequently and I I, um, I actually spend a lot, like a lot easier for me now to post because now I um, spend Friday afternoon planning my posts for the next week. And I kind of like, if I don't have new art to post, I will figure out other ways to fill it up. So I'll make a post about, like I have, um, like I try to do a promo post once a week, which is just a post saying like, okay, join my Patreon or mm -hmm. this is my art book or whatever. Like I never want it to feel like a annoying advertisement, but it just says something more about what I do. Um, and then I try to show a bit of my process once a week and I try to show some behind the scenes stuff. And, and that's only if I'm like out of new art, but posting frequently has been the only way to kind of like keep things stable because uh, otherwise it's it's like fluctuating all over the place on Instagram um, and on and because I'm focusing so much on Instagram I have content for all the other platforms too three times a week so that's yeah that's been the way for me it is quite demanding and I do consider it kind of like a second job to mm -hmm. keep up yes. with uh, social media but it, it yields a lot of results for me so I feel like it's worth yeah it. no consistency is super important like I feel like that's 
pretty much how I got my following. Like, luckily, my art, like, it's very storyboard based and like just kind of like sketchy and just like tells a story more than anything um more than like it's like oh it's like a beautiful illustration so I don't have to spend too much time on a specific piece but like the fact that I was able to post consistently is like what brought people in and kept them there because they're like oh well we know Kiana's gonna post again tomorrow like she'll have something up and um I think that's something a lot of people don't really realize and like um I feel like I mentioned this like in the document that I um I wrote up that like I think there's a lot to be learned from looking at like YouTubers honestly and like how Mm -hmm. they like post stuff like how they promote stuff like what times they're doing stuff and like um just like how often they're doing things and like how they brand themselves um like for a lot of them, like, I think, like, consistency, like, a lot of YouTubers that are, like, popular are just, like, very consistent, like, they'll have a specific upload schedule, or, like, if not, like, they're posting, like, every day, pretty much, and um, that consistency uh, just helps keep people around, I feel like, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, too, because with that sort of consistency, it actually trains the platforms, too, to who responds to your posts who interacts the most and helps give it the information to deliver it in the algorithm to the people that thinks it's going to best suit you. So it's kind of a hand in hand machine learning thing, Uh, Mm -hmm. which is crazy that we live in a time of robots, but (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, one thing that I'd like to talk about too, is just a little bit of the mental health that goes along with social media. We've kind of hit on some things that touch on that as well as like, don't focus on the numbers, you know, really uh, try and prioritize yourself and your, uh, your style to maintain your identity. But also like social media can be a real devastate, devastating spot for like trolls or negative comments or even just overworking yourself. Like Lois, you said, it's basically a second job. How can yeah. people really make sure that they maintain a good mental health while dealing with social media? Yeah, it's kind of hard to say because like we were just talking about like consistency and like trying to be on there as much as you can but then it's equally as important to like step away and like take mm-hmm. a break and just like not look at it for a little bit like I've definitely not been on Twitter as much lately like I'll just kind of post and leave and like maybe reply to a couple comments every few hours but otherwise I've like been limiting like how often I'm online um, i reduced my, my my screen time a lot on the past yeah. few weeks especially because mm-hmm. of work but also because i i i know that i won't be posting anything i don't have the time to do it so i just don't want to uh yeah d- don't want to be there just for just for wasting time just for like looking at stuff. Yeah. yeah yeah it's a, it's a tricky line to tell i think it's i think my starting out. what sorry Oh, I was just saying, like, it's it's tricky when, especially when you're starting out and trying to grow a following, because, like, you do want to be consistent, but, like, also you have to think about yourself and, like, make sure you're not just, like, constantly on there and being like, oh, what are people saying about me? Or, like, oh, I hope they like this art and just, like, racking your brain about it. Um, it's It's hard not to do that. It's super hard, but it's good to be able to start that early and, know, and like, set your own boundaries for yourself. Uh, yeah, the first, first 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 advice for for twitter for me would be turn off notifications from known followers because you mm. don't want to see that like if that person's <laughs> not supporting you it's not following your work why do you want because would you hear to like a, a random just crossing the street and saying something about your art or whatever about you like you don't want to mm-hmm. hear that so just block that uh i yeah. wish i wish instagram had, had that option but instagram is a little bit more uh strict like you have to block all comments from no followers and sometimes the comments from no no followers can bump your post so it's not um it's not as good as on twitter like on twitter it doesn't do anything you just you just avoid the trouble of a random saying stuff at you but on instagram don't do that keep the comments for for everyone because sometimes if if, if people comment a lot on your stuff it can bump your post on, on the algorithm yeah I'd say those boundaries are really good to maintain. Like um, mm-hmm. I always try to 
uh, like I've turned off notifications on almost everything. Cause like, I always feel everything. like if I, yeah, mm -hmm. if I have, I think that could be different. I mean, I think we all have a lot of followers and that's like a sort of specific problem for someone that has like, gets a lot of responses. Like you just don't want the notifications to mix into your personal life. But if you're just starting out, like maybe there's no harm in it, but I do think it's good to like schedule in. When do you have the time to look and when are you like mentally in the right mindset to like go through what you're getting and use it and, and be in a professional mindset because when you're just in your normal personal life and you're just I don't know like what I do in my personal life is browse you know funny videos of animals and memes yeah. <laughs> um you know when you're in that mindset you don't want to get like assaulted all of a sudden with like um you know a random negative comment or some controversy that suddenly boils up because you might not be ready to deal with it and you might not be ready to put it into perspective so I always try to like I start my day with, for me, that works, you know, with my emails and with like checking how social media has been and uh, the day before, and I can check the messages and kind of like deal with whatever came up. Um, and then in the evening I post and then I'm there for a little while responding. But outside of that, it's really important to just shut it off. I think. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Also when like, a, I, this is a sort of like an artistic advice that I have is like, there are a lot of people who are like, you should always be inspired, be inspired every moment of your life, go to museums, live, breathe inspiration. And that stuff always makes me feel like it really nervous. Cause I'm like, there are moments where I seeing a lot of inspiring and beautiful stuff just makes me feel dead inside. It just makes me feel overwhelmed and negative about my own work. And somehow I'm not able to actually file that into the right place in my brain to actually use that information. Um, so I don't think it's good to always be browsing social media and like be looking for inspiration from other artists and stuff, because then you will naturally be opening the floodgates of comparing yourself to other artists and like um, constantly feeling not good enough, constantly feeling less, less than. And that's, I think, the whole mechanism on which social media is built. Uh, it's a very negative thing about social media and you can easily fall into that trap. And I think if you can avoid that and set boundaries and allow yourself to simply not be inspired at all um, and just be in your personal life and be in a bubble away from social media, then you can get the most out of it. You can use it as a professional tool rather than as a yeah. kind of like, you know, erosion of your self-esteem uh, situation. Yeah, because artwork is something that you, you do. You're not, you're not it. Like you're not you're not an artist 100 percent of the time so you don't have to be yeah. constantly inspired but yeah, yeah. i relate to, to that so much whenever i'm at the wrong place in my like wrong mindset and i'm browse social media and i get these thoughts of like comparing myself to others and thinking i'm trash and oh my god it's terrible yeah. so yeah you, you, you definitely have to shut shut off the whole thing mm -hmm. yeah or have like a separate account where like all you do is just comfort zone lurk. Kind of like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah lurk exactly <laughs> but like in my case like yes. lurk meme pages rather than yeah there you go mistake, you know? <laughs> yeah i definitely exactly. have my art twitter and then like i have my uh like private twitter one. for yeah, yeah just for one. like just for friends and like for following like you said like more just like meme pages or like stuff that like just like not art basically like it's yeah. just a no yeah. art zone yeah, I think more and more people are doing that. It used to be you'd have like a fake account to like hide from your parents, and now yeah. it's like to hide from everything else. Yeah, 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 yeah really. from your own persona, right? Basically, <laughs> from the monster you created. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so one thing I'd like to do before we wrap is I'd like to kind of go back and have each of you talk about something that was impactful or like big for you on social media that you did so whether it was a project you did or a certain piece that you had that really like popped off or you're like oh cool uh, i'd just like to get something from each of you that like was important to you as an artist that happened on social media uh for me i mean like definitely getting my job like posting on twitter and then like getting that email saying like hey do you want to take a test for the show like that was huge for me um and like that was thanks like i'm going to shout out uh the drawing while black tag uh mm. abel um hayford made it i think in 2017 was the first one um and i hopped on that tag and like that post and like the traction from like the, that tag like trending like managed to get my work in front of 
the showrunners who hired me. Um, so definitely use tags. Um, Abel, Hayford is amazing. They like, I just have to sh shout them out because they've been doing yeah. so much for like the black artist yeah. community lately. Um, but yeah, like that post that I did is basically what got me my job and like got my work in front of um, Disney of all places. And um, yeah, I was able to show myself because like I didn't have a portfolio at the time either. Like I was still a senior and like working on my portfolio. So I was like, oh, I don't have anything to show. It's like all bad. Like, oh, I have this team rocket art. Oh God. And then like, luckily, like that was enough for my showrunners to like see like, oh, this person wants to be a storyboard artist. Their art doesn't necessarily line up exactly with like what our cartoon looks like, but they could draw and it's good and they look like a funny person. So we'll like give them this test and uh, just having that opportunity to show that like, yes, I can do this job and like have that happen through social media was like huge for me, but, yeah. Uh, for me, it was uh, the, the Doodles project, which was the thing that kick-started my presence online, which is what I relied on to get any other stuff, any other clients and, and uh, any other things going. And then the, the Ickers and the Sun, which was in 2016, which kind of went viral and people really connected to that and related to that story. After, like, after that, uh, last year, I released the Kickstarter, like uh, an Indiegogo campaign to to actually make the book real. Um, and then uh, the third thing would be the Casual Teen Titans series that I started on 2017, which got me my my job at DC Comics, which is awesome because I, I remember <laughs> I, I sent an email to DC uh, back in 2016 I was really, really green, like really trying to, to find my, my voice, my artistic voice. I just figured out I wanted to do comics and I sent them my portfolio and they replied back and they were super kind, but they were like, hey, you have to do this and this and that. You're not ready yet, but please keep trying. They were like super, super kind. And to have them reach out to me later to offer me a job was insane it was so good you really and got him which is, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> which is the thing which is the thing i'm doing right now so all good stuff mm -hmm. awesome it's so so seriously heartwarming to hear that you guys both found your success through social media from doing what you love which is mm -hmm. i think what social media can give artists yes um definitely for me, the biggest thing that I did, was, okay, so I, I was going through my old DeviantArt journals because of the DeviantArt 20th birthday, which is like yeah. the most cringy thing ever. Um, the way that I used to write was just so awkward. Um, and I would sometimes like share my thoughts in my journal and it was really cringy to read again. And one of them was like, I don't like tutorials. Uh, they have a bad reputation on this website and I'm not making it because I'm sick of being <laughs> crappy anime eye tutorials so just no <laughs> and um and then but so I was like really anti-knowledge sharing for a while I'm not sure exactly why well I was self-taught so I always thought that everybody else could just do that too um didn't occur to me that there are people who you know really do like like want technical information um and so at some point I made the switch uh because everyone was asking you know like how did you draw that how did you do that and I was always like thinking is this a joke like anybody can see how I make my art there's nothing interesting about it I finally got over that and I made a little tutorial and then from there I started doing more and more kind of like little bits of knowledge sharing I was asked to make tutorials for like magazines that sort of got me into it even though it felt very awkward um, started making like I eventually made an art book that has a lot of tips and advice in there and tutorials as well mm. and honestly um, oh yeah so and like four years ago is that no three years ago I started doing uh, workshops which was like kind of the next level of this sort of thing and I was so afraid to do it the only reason why I went was because it was a Brazilian guy asking me to do it and he was super persuasive like he kept sending me <laughs> pictures of beaches like beautiful white beaches and he was like yeah. come to Brazil you'll be on this beach you'll be drinking from a coconut and then I went and it was really awesome but I found out once there that the city I was in was known mostly for its high crime rate so he was like <laughs> Oh, no. It was very manipulative, but I'm so happy he did it because it was one of the best experiences of my whole entire life. And oh. I think that when I started sharing knowledge, I, I, without realizing it, um, I, was, 
I was listening to what my followers were asking for me. So I was like kind of trying to give them what they wanted. And by doing that, I managed to find an avenue in my work that made what I did genuinely meaningful to me, except I didn't know it at the time that it would become that way. And for me, sharing knowledge and advice and getting the opportunity to give workshops, meet people face to face has been like, um, you know, I like drawing, but I love meeting people. And I love being able to connect uh, on the artistic level. Like we all struggle and we all are insecure and we all, want to get somewhere and we want to know how to make this work and and it, mm -hmm. I've connected with so many people on this level now that I feel more than happy with what I do I feel connected to the world through uh, something that social media has opened up for me so that that is the thing that I'm so happy I discovered and I always encourage other people to keep doing what they love and keep listening to their followers because it can open up pathways in your life that that can make your life more meaningful and that's kind of like spiritual, but that's how it's been. Yeah. It's yeah. That's been so amazing. special. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, amazing. That's, awesome. <laughs> that's great. Oh my God. Oh. I just love the artist community. Uh, I'm so sad yeah. this yeah. year that we don't get to meet up. Like, I mean, I li this light box thing is really cool. Yeah. Um, I love it, but like real life light box, I am, I cannot wait uh, to have it again. Cause like the feeling that you get from it is just so special. The atmosphere there was amazing. Yeah. So hopefully all really of you incredible. at home are feeling part of that now. <laughs> and yeah, hopefully we all get to hang out next year. Yes, yeah. fingers crossed. I know that we're tight on time, so I'm gonna wrap things up. But today we talked about everything from social media as a learning tool to mental health, to the traps of social media. Uh, how to be true to your art versus the influence of everyone else. And most importantly, feeling connected to the world and being connected as a community. So uh, thank you to all of our amazing panelists today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let you all give uh, where people can find you online. And I know that we've got your uh, usernames linked beneath, but uh, yeah, go ahead and go around and we'll sign off. Yeah, you can just find me at Kiana My Art pretty much everywhere. Kiana My on some places, I think DeviantArt and Instagram, but just type in Kiana My, you'll find me. <laughs> Same for Elia. For me, just type Gabriel Piccolo or just Piccolo, you're probably going to find me. It's pretty easy. For me, it's kind of complicated because there's some person <laughs> called like Lois Hampton or something that has claimed oh, no. all the Lois speeches. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> um. So I'm known as Lois VB because my last name is Bombarda uh, on Instagram. And I'm also I'm known as Lois with two H's on Twitter. <laughs> it's really impractical. So just Google Lois, uh, <laughs> L-O-I-S-H. You'll probably find it in the end. <laughs> All right. And again, uh, my name is Matt Buholtz and you can find me GG Matt B across everything. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for learning about social media. And I hope that you have a great day and enjoy Lightbox. Yay.